The Mayor's Health Expo is a terrific township event that makes available to all of our residents the hospitals around town, the doctors, the pharmacies, all the different senior groups, all the different government groups. There are uh, ways to get screenings. Uh, you can get blood work done. You can just talk to people and get advice. It's mainly free. Some tests are, are, uh, are, have a charge, but of course you can run that through your insurance. But it's great because we put everybody into one spot and one visit can get you, you know, a dozen different uh, pieces of advice from a dozen different people. It's an important service for our senior population, but anybody actually can come, families. Uh, it's just a great thing to have in Woodbridge Township. And I want to thank everybody who puts this together, Dennis Green, the health director, all of his staff. They do a wonderful job making this available to the residents of Woodbridge Township. Hi, I'm Dennis Green. I'm the Director of Health for Woodbridge Township, and we're here at the Mayor's Health Expo. It's October, and we always have the Health Expo, usually on the third or fourth Saturday in October. We have it every year here at the Health Center. The Health Center is located at 2 George Frederick Plaza, and we're located between the, the main Woodbridge Library and the Woodbridge High School. At the Health Expo, we also have local hospitals and local health organizations. They come here to present their information and, you know, help, you know, the residents by answering questions and having information. The last thing we do is we also offer a lot of different screenings. So we offer eye screenings, hearing screenings, oral cancer screenings, blood, blood pressure screenings, flu shots. Our, our health team, the nurses do um, blood pressures and flu shots and we do a lot of different things. We offer as many screenings and information as we can, different organizations, other um, organizations from the county health department, wellness organizations, hospitals, they all participate and come here on uh, the third, usually the third Saturday in October to participate and, and meet our residents and answer their questions. So what I'd like to do now is kind of show you around and meet some, some of the vendors. We can ask them what they're doing, why they're here, and what information they have. So we're here with Catherine Brown from the Woodbridge Public Library, and Catherine's going to tell us why she was here today and a little bit about her program. Okay, the library provides resources to the uh, people of Woodbridge. In this case, we're providing some of our health-related resources that we provide on the library's website with a valid Woodbridge library card. Library cards are open to any resident of Woodbridge, and we'd love to have you come and get a library card and use the Woodbridge Public Library. So the Woodbridge Library has a main branch, and how many um, other branches? We have three uh, branches, Fords, Islin, and the Henry Inman branch in Colonia. And each one has, obviously, books and information, but they also have health information and wellness information. And if you go to maybe um, one of the librarians at those libraries, they can help you find whatever information you're looking for? That's for sure. We have a very knowledgeable staff, and we're all very willing to help. Terrific. Thanks for coming today. Thank you for having us. So at this table, we're here with the organization called Organizing for Action, and we're here with... Juanetta Phillips. Denise Fernandez. Okay, so who's going to tell us why we're, why we're here today? We're here to share information about health care. Affordable Care Act, open enrollment begins November 1st, and we go to different organizations just sharing information about health care, a.k.a. Obamacare. Okay, great. So, so you have information for people who will come, up, come to the table and, and you can provide them information about how they can register and, and what type of plans there, there are? Uh, yes, um, and information in Spanish and in English because we believe that uh, everybody needs to get the information. And we are basically a resource point. We just tell them what to do, where to go. We just don't tell them where to enroll. We just tell them, okay, this is the information. Call this number. If you have any questions, here's the information. Sure. So you actually help facilitate them and make the contact, and do. And you're also fluent in Spanish, so you can you can speak with them in, in a native language if that's their language. Exactly. Yes, correct. And organizing organizing for action is an organization created by President Obama. 
but health care is not partisan. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Terrific. Thank you. And I Thank appreciate you. you guys coming today and helping us get the information out there. Thank you. So we're here with the Sheriff's Department and we're here with? Officer uh, Chris McCray. So Chris, I know you're here at the Health, Health Expo. What do you have with us today? Um, today we have a lot of, you know, community awareness products that uh, we like to show that, you know, we're out here to make sure that everyone is safe. Um, a big thing that we do is uh, we go to a lot of schools and we try to talk to kids, tell them about, you know, stranger danger, internet safety, you know, um, the rights and wrongs you know, who to talk to, who are good strangers. Um, you know, as a community servant, what we're trying to do is trying to build that, you know, bridge to let us, everyone know that, you know, we are you and you are us, you know, we are one, you know, because there's a lot of divide that's going on right now. So we're out here to let people know that, you know, we're here for you. We're here to uphold the law, you know. Um, Terrific. So it's, it's good to know. So you're doing outreach and you do outreach specifically to for, for, for school age children. Yes, we do uh, for school-aged children. We do, uh, you know, elderly um, to make sure that, you know, they don't go through any fraudulent things, you know, try to keep them safe, you know, let them know what's going on. Uh, we go to high schools. We pretty much try to reach every single person that we can, anyone who would listen, to let them know that, you know, we're here for them. Terrific. Thank you. It's good to know that you have the outreach programs for youth and for elderly and to, you know, keep them informed and knowledgeable about what, uh, what kind of dangers there are out there. Thank you. Thank you. So we're here with Wegmans. Wegmans is doing a healthy cooking demo, and we're here with Brianna and Kyle. Okay, Kyle. So it looks like you have some interesting food here today. What do you have for us today? This is our uh, cauliflower rice sushi. This is our garden vegetable roll. It's a uh, ground cauliflower that we use for our sushi rice. Uh, we have roasted red peppers, asparagus, avocado, and cucumber. So it's an it's an all healthy all uh, vegetable roll for us that we offer at the store. Terrific. So it looks it looks delicious. It really does. So these are ty some types of foods that you offer at Wegmans? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Well, thanks for coming with us today. Thank you for having us. Okay, so we're here with Shirley Genty. Shirley Genty oversees the Evergreen Senior Center and the Sycamore Senior Center. So Shirley, tell us a little bit about the two centers. Um, do you want me to hold it? Okay. <laughs> the two centers are actually a great opportunity for senior citizens to hang out and socialize with each other. They both offer an array of wonderful exercise classes, um, arts, arts and craft workshops like painting, wood burning, um, as well as wonderful luncheons with good foods, good themes, um, and some great trips where we go throughout the state of New Jersey and in Pennsylvania um, to just hang out, view different locations, see different historical sites, go to Atlantic City for um, casino and gambling events, and go do New York City shows as well. It's a free membership for seniors over the age of 60. Terrific. I'm glad you brought that up. So how do you become a member of either Sycamore Senior Center or Evergreen Senior Center? It's really easy. All you have to do is go into either of the centers, ask for a membership form, um, and then you just complete it, give proof of residency, which is usually your driver's license, and then you're good to go and you're free to start using the centers that day. Terrific. And seniors at eight, what age and up? 60 years and older. Terrific. Thank you, Shirley. You're welcome. this table we're here with Josh from Big Shots. Josh, tell us what you have with us today. Well, we have a uh, pasta salad, we have a grilled chicken balsamic sandwich, we have a Cajun bite uh, chicken, and we have a grilled quesadilla, vegetable quesadilla. Terrific. So you brought some food for the attendees to munch on while they're here? Yeah, we brought some food and we're with chef. Terrific. Okay, well we appreciate Big Shots donating the food for the event. Thank you. Okay, so at this table, we're here with the Woodbridge Community Center, and we're here with? Carolee Andrish. So, Carolee, tell us why you're here and what information you have for residents. We're here to tell everybody all the great stuff that we give at the, have at the community center, uh, all the fitness classes and our swimming class lessons and our memberships to uh, residents and non-residents. 
So, okay, so you have some great brochures here and some schedules and things like that. So it kind of details all the different programs that you have at the community mm -hmm. center, all the variety and all the, so you have exercise classes, wellness classes, all kinds of different stuff that um, residents can partake in. Swimming lessons we have uh, that are just going to be starting out in, in um, November. We have our um, children's clinics, basketball and soccer clinics. We have uh, all of our fitness classes are free to members. And if you're not a member, you can always drop in for $8, or you can use the facility, the whole facility, for a day for $10. Terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so at this table, we're here with the multi-service program on aging. These are uh, social workers for the township of Woodbridge. And we're here with... Michelle Morgan. And who else do you have with you today? We have our graduate student, Catherine, and my social worker, Julie Hackler. So, Michelle, tell us a little bit of information about why you're here and what information you have for the residents of Woodbridge. So the information that we wish these senior citizen residents to know about us is that we provide social work services, that we provide information and referral, especially during a time with the Medicare initial open enrollment period. We are SHIP counselors and trained to offer advice and information during this uh, very confusing time. We also provide counseling services during transitions in life and grief and mourning. We connect you to services that will help to simplify life so that you can live as independently as possible at home. Home. We offer information on the low income home energy program currently in its inception so that you can get assistance with your utility assistance. So terrific. So that was a lot of information. So if someone wanted to uh, reach out to you and contact you, how would they do that? So our telephone number is 732-726-6262. We are located inside the Evergreen Senior Center, and the name of our office is Multi-Service Program on Aging. We both make home visits as well as office visits. Terrific, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're here at the Municipal Alliance table and we're here with? Liz Cowan. So Liz, tell us a little bit about what information you have here for the residents of Woodbridge Township. Currently with the um, Municipal Alliance, we have two programs um, that are in the schools. One is Heroes and Cool Kids. Um, basically, the high school seniors and juniors and seniors are able to learn different strategies for um, bullying, substance use, things like that, and they bring it into the middle schools. Hopefully this year we're looking to have all five middle schools um, bring the program into the elementary schools. They have a sidekick program, which is basically a modified version of the Heroes and Cool Kids, um, as well as strengthening our families that we offer in up to eight elementary and middle schools in the township, um, and those programs are working on communication skills and family skills with the parents and the children, um, and teachers are facilitating the program. Um, in Colonia, we have a youth center. Uh, it's a drop-off center for 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th graders. Um, basically, they can do homework and activities so that they're working on um, ways to not be at home and use substances. So terrific. So you have some great programs going on here. So if someone needed to contact you, where and uh, how would they contact you? You can direct the phone call to me at the health center at 732-855-0600, extension 5020. Again, my name is Liz, so that's 732-855-0600, extension 5020. Great. Thanks for coming today. So now we're at the table of drug addiction services, and we're here with... Bonnie Nolan, Addiction Services. So Bonnie, tell us a little bit about what you have here for the residents and what your program's about. What we want to uh, explain to the residents today is the connection between opioids and addiction, opioid pain pills, opioid painkillers, and how they're the same drug as heroin. We want to sort of ex uh, express to people that they can make other choices when they have pain. They can use ibuprofen, naproxen sodium, so things like Advil and Aleve are actually a better option if you have any kind of pain. Um, opioid pain pills should be a last resort. So opioid addictions and overdoses have been in the news a lot lately. Um, do we have a program to help um, address those type of issues? 
Absolutely. If people know someone or someone in your family or yourself has an opioid pain pill or a heroin issue, you can call us um, at 732-855-0600, extension 5008, and we can help um, intervene. We can help refer people to treatment. We also have support services for people who have just finished inpatient, so we can help people sort of build a life without drugs outside of treatment. Terrific. That's great information. It's important. Um, and we can get in contact with you through at the health center? That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. So now we're here with Param Care, and uh, we're in actually the clinic area. So what, what do you have for us here at the Health Expo today? Uh, we are doing over here skin cancer screening for the community. We are doing this program. This is our fourth year, yes. and uh, we are just uh, screening the general community, uh, those people who might have, like, little questions, and they are a little reluctant. So here in the privacy, they can ask me, and they can show me wherever they are, uh, you know, having an issue. And we generally, you know, give them the suggestion plus the referral for the doctor's appointment. Terrific. Thank you. And I forgot to ask you your name and who you're with today. My name is Rupal Babaria. I'm a registered nurse, and I'm a chemotherapy provider as well. Uh, hi, my name is Nandish Patak, and I'm working with the Param Group uh, as well as the Param Care Foundations. Okay, so basically, you're here to stress the importance of skin can skin cancer screenings, and um, and you're here to actually provide some screenings, also, correct? Yes, uh, not only the skin cancer screening, but it's more of like the healthy living, healthy lifestyle, like uh, you know, drink healthy, drink water, healthy food, and all those things. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks for coming today. Okay, so at this table, we're here with Robert Wood Johnson and Rawway, and we're here with Dr. Marshall Feldman and Jane Afromova. So tell us what you have here today at your table and what um, screenings you may be pre uh, preparing. We have here a screening for the foot. We're doing an uh, evaluation of the patient's arches, the patient's uh, nails, and patient's circulation. And we do this in order to obviate the need for any further uh, work or problems that the patient may have. If there is a problem, we refer them over to the hospital. Uh, we do wound care uh, healing. Uh, we are um, a certified wound care center that has hyperbaric oxygen and uh, skin grafting. Now Jane uh, is the wound care specialist and she'll tell you what she does. Um, I'm the nursing director for the wound care center. Uh, we do uh, advanced wound um, healing for patients with non-healing ulcerations, usually due to diabetes or uh, problems, various problems with their circulation. Um, and uh, yes, we do advanced wound care treatments, including hyperbaric oxygen, skin grafting, and various other procedures. Okay. Well, terrific. Sounds like you, you're bringing some very important screenings for us today, and we really appreciate you being here. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, at the Expo, we're here at the table of the Community Affairs Division of the Woodbridge Police Department, and we're here with... Detective Mark Zeno, my partner Joel Slosberg, and our big assistant. Terrific. Thanks for coming today. So give us a little information about why you're here and what information you have for the residents. Uh, today we're promoting pedestrian and child safety. We're using, we have our bicycle safety helmets and our helmets to give displays to the kids. For the adults, we're promoting walking in between the crosswalks and not listening to your headphones or talking on your telephone whilst you're walking. Terrific. Well, thanks for coming today. Now, if someone was watching this and wanted to contact you, how would they do that? Or they could just reach us at the police, regular police number, you ask for community affairs, either Detective Zeno or Detective Slosberg, and we'll come out to you. Terrific. Thanks for coming today. Thank you very much. So at this table, we're here with the Middlesex County Office of Public Health, and we're here with... Katie Garrahy. So Katie, tell us a little bit why you're here and what information you have for our residents. Okay, I'm one of the nurses for the Middlesex County SEED program. It's the Cancer Education Early Detection Program. Um, we service the uninsured and underinsured members of Middlesex County. 
Um, underinsured basically just means that if they have a high deductible or um, if their co-pays for cancer screening visits are above $50, um, it's men and women. Women, we have breast and cervical cancer screenings. Um, men, we have colorectal and prostate cancer. And women can also um, get the colorectal screenings as well. Okay, great. So you offer screenings throughout the county? Uh, yes, we actually have a clinic here at the Woodbridge County Health Department. Um, I believe it's once a month. And then we have our clinic on Jersey Avenue in New Brunswick. And that can be anywhere from twice to three times a month. Well, terrific. It sounds like you're providing an excellent service and a needed service with the community. If they wanted to reach you, how would they do that? Um, the number for the program, at least for the Maine County Health Department, is 732-745-3100. And that's the main number for the building. Um, and they would just ask for someone from the SEED program. Terrific. Well, thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we're here now with the Hackensack Meridian table, and we're here with? Uh, John Murphy. I'm the manager of the respiratory care department uh, in Perth Amboy, and I also cover the um, Oldbridge uh, division. And uh, we're representing some of our departments here. We're doing some screening. Um, right uh, to our uh, right here is the balance screening. We're doing some balance setting. Um, behind me, we're doing uh, pulmonary function testing, and uh, we also have the bariatric table uh, for some other screening. Well, terrific. So you're offering a variety of screenings here today, and we really appreciate that because all those screenings are very important for, you know, for a variety of reasons. So can you tell us a little bit about the pulmonary function screening? Oh, sure. Um, we're also offering um, asthma education. So any, any people that have either relatives or family members, uh, we're offering education for asthma. We're also doing what's called pulmonary function screening. So it's actually just a single breath. And what that involves is the patient takes a deep breath and exhales out, and we look at some results that are compared to predicted values, and then we give them kind of a, an idea of exactly what their uh, breathing volumes and capacities are. Well, terrific. We really appreciate you coming here today, and thank you for participating. Thank you. Appreciate it. So at this table, we're here with New Jersey Snap Ed, and we're here with. My name is Evelyn Fuertes, and this is Hamna. Okay. Well, thanks for coming today. Tell us a little bit about your program. So Snap Ed, NJ Snap Ed provides limited income resource adults and families nutrition education in order to prevent obesity, and so that they use their Snap dollar benefits in a in a better way. Okay. Sure, terrific. So I see you have some displays on your table. Can you yes. explain the purpose and the need um, to have these displays? Sure. So today we're doing a sugary beverage game. And so basically everything on the table, we have uh, how many teaspoons each item has. So we're having people guess how many teaspoons is in their beverages that they may be drinking once a day, twice a day, a couple times a week, just to educate them on how much sugar they're actually taking in. Okay, so more it's a more awareness type thing because exactly. sometimes people don't realize how much sugar they're taking in um, and why, why they're drinking their daily beverage. Exactly, and uh, a lot of times people don't realize that beverages can add a lot of, they drink their calories. And so this is just, as you said, an awareness program. Terrific. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Hi, and at this table we're here with Robert Wood Johnson, and we're here with a diabetes educator. Um, and what's your name? Gary Paul. Gary, tell us a little bit about why you're here and what information you have for us. Uh, right, today we are also doing glucose testing in a non-fasting state. Some, a lot of people have shown up today fasting, so we can interpret that just as well. But many times uh, people come to these health fairs and they are not fasting, uh, and they um, get their blood sugars 
checked and they are confused about the numbers. Um, but so if their numbers are high uh, in the fasting state, um, we can you know, steer them toward education. I, the reason we're here is to let people know about our education program at uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Rahway. Uh, there we have a program that uh, involves a, a pharmacist, two registered dietitians, two registered nurses, and an exercise physiologist, which is actually my role at the hospital. We work on people's um, uh, diabetes management through diet and exercise and um, uh, monitoring their blood sugars and um, advising about the medicines they take. So great. So you mentioned that we're doing a screening here, you're doing the blood, glu blood glucose screening, and that gives us an indicator of what? Uh, well, it, it tells us, of course, how much blood sugar is circulating in the bloodstream. Higher than normal levels damage blood vessels. That's the real threat of diabetes is that you do microvascular damage to your blood vessels. So we want to see what uh, levels of blood sugar are circulating. And, uh, and, and actually with prediabetes, well, diabetes, prediabetes are on the rise in America. Um, and we know that actually fasting blood sugars hide the problem of prediabetes for maybe three to four years, whereas if you do a non-fasting blood sugar test, we can discover the problem several years uh, earlier and start addressing the problem through the education process and, and steering toward uh, medical help from a physician if necessary. Okay. Well, it's terrific. So, so you do the screening, you get the results, and then if the results look like someone may be at risk of diabetes, you refer them for, for treatment and care? Uh, we suggest that they follow up. Uh, one test does not necessarily um, you know, give 100% uh, accurate results. If they have pain that day, if they're stressed, if they didn't sleep well, if they have allergies, all these things can cause a, uh, a rise in blood sugar. But if they keep watching their blood sugars and they see that they're rising, uh, you know, we definitely suggest they see their physician, get uh, follow-up blood work, particularly the hemoglobin A1C blood test, which is actually more accurate. But we will, we will start advising. Usually most people need to lose weight. So uh, weight loss is the big fix with diabetes. So we will, uh, in our program, work on weight loss. Uh, one of our registered dietitians also works with the Lighter Lifestyle Adult Weight Loss Program. We have a adolescent weight loss program at the hospital called Shape Down for ages 8 to 16. Uh, weight loss is the big fix in diabetes, but it turns out that pre-diabetes makes people gain weight, and diabetes usually makes you gain weight. So there's actually a, a chicken before the egg uh, a fallacy here that people think they get diabetes because they gain weight, but in fact, the diabetes makes them gain weight. And we, we have um, strategies for uh, helping with weight loss, which again is the big fix. So they, they come to us for that too. So the key is to get screened. Uh, the screening starts at right. The key is, uh, the, as you say, get screened. Terrific. Thank you for coming today. All right. You're welcome. Okay. Hi. And at this table, we're here with Prob. Um, and representing Prob is? Rosa Torres. I'm an outreach representative. Okay. So tell us a little bit about why you're here today. Hi, I'm here to bring information to the Township of Woodbridge about our Low Income Home Energy Program and our weatherization program, two programs that are government funded and completely free to income eligible residents of Woodbridge. Okay. Well, terrific. So I see you have lots of information on the table. Um, and so what, what your goal is to actually give them some information on how to access those resources? Exactly. Um, if they come to our table, we'll show them how the program will actually help um, be, have their homes be more energy efficient. Um, we insulate your home. We will replace windows and doors. It's like attics and basements completely free of charge if you're income eligible. As well, we do for up to $450 of free home oil delivery to seniors who are homebound or families with young children. Well, that's terrific. It sounds like you got some really great programs, very uh, interesting and important programs for the community. Thank you for coming today. Thank you so much for having us. So hi, so we're here at this table with Dr. Danis Quadri. 
Um, he's a dentist, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his program. We are uh, bringing the dental office out to the health fair this year. We're, we're doing oral cancer screenings, talking to patients about uh, wisdom teeth. Uh, a couple of people asked about whitening, gum disease, and just general dental questions that people have. Well, terrific. I see you brought a couple of people with, yep. with you here today. Can you introduce them? This is Rush Deep, our hygienist. This is Clara. She's our, one of our front desk and uh, dental assistants. And this is Kathy. She's one of our dental assistants as well. Well, it's terrific. It's great to see that um, they've come and participated today, and we're really happy. So have you been busy? We have been very busy, busier than last year, definitely, and it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Well, terrific. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having us. We'll be here next year. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, so we're here at the JFK Breast Center table. Um, please introduce yourself. I'm Karen. I'm a nurse navigator at JFK. Okay, so tell us a little bit about why you're here today. Okay, for breast education, it's important for everybody to get their mammogram. Um, you should go every year, starting at age 40, earlier if you have a family history. Uh, JFK does have the 3D mammography, which is a really great thing. We also use the little uh, pink pad. It makes your mammograms more comfortable. And that's it, just very important. Check your breasts every month, go for your mammogram, and if you have any questions, go see your doctor. Terrific. So if they want to contact you at the JFK Breast Center, how would they do that? They can call the main number at JFK, 732-321-7000, uh, and ask for the Breast Center or scheduling to make an appointment. Terrific. Thank you for coming today. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Excellent. And at this table, we have the Middlesex County Mosquito Commission, and we're here with Matthew Bickerton. So, Matthew, tell us a little bit about why you're here and the importance of mosquito control. Okay, well, the main focus of our uh, display today is the Asian tiger mosquito and Zika virus. And these have been kind of the two, kind of the two major issues uh, this year, especially for um, for homeowners. So, a lot of people are concerned about the Zika virus because it was, uh, as most people know, it was uh, an epidemic this past year in South, South America and uh, the Caribbean islands. And a lot of people are worried about it uh, you know, occurring in America in the lower 48. So we have had a, a minor outbreak in Florida and, um, and kind of what we're doing is uh, to, to tell people what the symptoms are, what they should be avoiding, where they should be avoiding travel, especially if they're in the at-risk group and that, that is uh, mainly, um, mainly concerned with uh, pregnant women. Um, so pregnant women should, uh, you know, avoid traveling to areas that are affected with Zika virus, um, in particular uh, places like Puerto Rico, um, Brazil, uh, the Dominican Republic, and, uh, and small parts of Miami. And so we encourage people to check the, the CDC website um, to find out where those areas are because they update their recommendations, you know, on a weekly basis. As far as New Jersey is concerned, um, we're not at risk. Uh, we're not at high risk for having local transmission of Zika virus, and that is where our our local mosquitoes are actively spreading the disease. That's not occurring in New Jersey, and we are hoping and uh, anticipating that's not going to happen at least anytime soon. Um, the one mosquito that we have that can transmit the virus is um, is the Asian tiger mosquito, Aedes albopictus. And it's very important because it's a household mosquito. It's a kind of mosquito that likes to live and likes to uh, lay eggs around people's homes in small sources of standing water, like containers, buckets, uh, tires, gutters, uh, planters, um, you know, tarps, grill covers, anything that can hold a small amount, you know, around maybe a liter or so of water, is going to be a good source for these mosquitoes. And that's what we're telling people to, uh, to, to try and avoid, to try and get rid of. So some of the tips, obviously, for mosquito control is to eliminate their area where they breed, and that's the, the areas of water, like where water accumulates? Yeah, that, that, that is correct. Play, small, uh, small standing water around your home, that's where the Asian tiger mosquito is going to, is going to deposit her eggs. Those eggs are going to hatch, and the larvae are going to swim around in that water for um, a week or so, and then, uh, then they're going to turn into adult mosquitoes, and they're going to be a, a nuisance-biting problem. And we've seen that all throughout Middlesex County, and it's, it's now it's, it's a problem in every county in the state. Um, and this mosquito has, within the past few years, it's kind of become 
probably the most important mosquito uh, from our perspective in terms of a nuisance mosquito. Are those are the really small mosquitoes, right? The Asian tigers are the really small ones. Yeah, these are they're they're typically uh, fairly small, and they're they're distinctive because they're black and white, jet black and solid white, little white stripes along their legs and along their. Um, you know, their palps. Um, so they're very distinctive looking. They're really the only, probably the only mosquito that you're going to encounter regularly that looks like that. That's black and white striped. Um, and so that's, that's, and it, that's distinctive and so a lot of people can know what they are just by seeing them. So homeowners should remember that any standing water for seven days or more has the potential of breeding these mosquitoes. That is correct, yep, that's okay. correct. So we should eliminate any type of water sources that accumulate and, and stay stagnant for seven days so we can eliminate and hopefully uh, reduce our, our chances of getting a Zika or any, or any other mosquito-borne virus, correct? That's correct. That's the main message. Great. Thanks. Thanks for coming today. You're welcome. So that concludes our interviews of all our vendors here today at the Health Expo. As you can see, a lot of different vendors here offered a lot of different information and screenings. We want to thank them all for participating today. Um, they really did dedicate their time and energy, and we really appreciate that. If you couldn't make it this year, please try to remember it's a third, it's a third Saturday in October every year. And I'm Dennis Green, the Director of Health for Woodbridge Township. Thanks for watching.